Hey guys, it's Kinky. As we all know, No Man's Sky is massive. You can't search everything and it takes forever to get to the center. But I'm going to make your journey to the center just a little bit easier today, if not way easier. So let's get started. The first thing we should talk about is movement over the surface of the planet. Obviously, sprinting and using the jetpack does not make you move much faster than walking. The melee function, however, lunges you forward, so if you use a melee and your jetpack in quick succession, you will lunge yourself much further. You could take this a step further and sprint melee then jump in quick succession for an even greater boost of speed. If you're looking for wildlife on a planet, be sure to use your analysis visor and look for dots with a radiating circle. These are either a single or group of animals that are patrolling the world. But be sure to also check the air and the waters as they can also be hiding in those places. When you go to upgrade your suit, you're probably going to want to find these dropships which give you a single slot upgrade for your exosuit. These upgrades start at 10,000 and plus 10,000 for each upgrade you do. There are several types of buildings in the No Man's Sky galaxy and the ball top and satellite dish tops will both lead you to centerpieces that will only take you to a ruin site somewhere on the planet. There's a good chance you want new tech and products to be able to make and looking for manufacturing and operation centers are a pain. But if you come to these signal scanners and make a bypass chip, you can choose the option Colonial Outpost and that'll give you the nearest operation center or manufacturing center. These areas are important because they give you access to products and technology that'll make your playthrough easier. And I have even heard, though not confirmed personally, that Corvax Operation Centers give you Atlas Passes versions 2 and 3. On the other hand, the manufacturing centers may be more important purely because they give you access to new products that are required to make new technologies such as the dynamic resonator. In pretty much every single one of these that you come across, it's going to either be a math sequence or a logic puzzle. Just make sure to choose the right answer as best as you can because you only get the one shot unless you revert to a previous save. Possibly one of the more important buildings are the antenna buildings as they contain maps that will lead you to crash landed ships that are almost always within a slot or two of your own. They always are on these style maps with some sort of logic puzzle or most likely a map sequence of some sort. There's only about five or six different math sequences, so if you don't like math, just commit them to memory. They're not that hard. At some point, you're gonna have to travel to the other side of a planet, and if you're using the surface of the planet, it's gonna take you a long time to traverse that due to all the air resistance your ship is running into. But if you are to go into space, and use all your boosts up there, there's no air resistance and you can move at much faster speeds, turning probably a 40 minute trip into a 40 second trip. If you're quickly trying to get to the other side of an entire planet, I would highly suggest doing this over using the ground method unless you want to spend that time looking for things that are in between your destination and where you started. If you do a bunch of the antennas, you're gonna find a bunch of crash ships, each one being one better than the last. Sometimes they won't be. And if you keep on upgrading, this is a semi-fast way of getting a larger size ship. Of course, the easiest way to get the biggest ships are just to purchase them. 
But keep in mind that if you go to purchase a ship and you have yourself a very upgraded ship that you're going to trade, then the ship that you're going to purchase is going to be a lot more expensive to try to equal out over the price of your own ship. If you were to strip your own ship down to absolute bare bones technologies before trading for a new ship, then you're effectively reducing the trade cost of whatever ship you would like to purchase. So a 46 slot ship that was 151 million is now only 44 million because there are no technologies to inflate that price. And finally, when you're putting new technologies on your person, in your ship, or on your multi-tool, it is highly important that you put them adjacent to one another as they'll gain an aura and bonuses for being close. Thank you guys for watching, and if you liked the video, please show me by hitting that like button and subscribe for more content. And then I'll, if you like it, I'll put more content like this out there. But until then, I hope to see you guys later, and you guys have yourselves a wonderful day. Toodaloo.